good morning. Um, we get asked a lot, in fact I get asked a lot about what tools we carry on the boat and what spares we carry on the boat. So I've been putting it off because it trashes the boat and we've got lockers full of tools and I didn't want to do it because it would just mean making another godforsaken mess for half a day. Anyway, kind of came to a head because my toolbox and my tool chest was just such a mess I thought I better get this fixed, get it organised. So here we're going to do spares, tools, what we carry on the boat and I'll run through with you during this kind of like chat what we found to be really useful and what we bought that we're like well, then really used it. You will see here I've got like a big table full of tools. This is probably one quarter of two lockers full of tools. So this is just the basics and some of them and then what I'll do is I'll run through these what we find really useful and then I'll kind of turn it around put all these back put the next lot up and just keep going through them and keep going through them until you've got a good idea apologies for those of you who want to watch sailing god this is tedious isn't it like they're talking about hammers like hammers really really you're going to talk about hammers this is a mallet I was about to say is that not a mallet <laughs> all right all right <laughs> let's just start with the least subtle tools hammers and mallets loads of them um one two three i actually think i've got more hammers um you kind of need them but these are obvious things um mallet for kind of trying to do things that don't damage wood as much so they, these are specific purposes but again i'm gonna kind of move on if you don't know what a hammer is you probably shouldn't be buying a boat this thing um, is an, up, an upholstery removing tool. It acts as a little miniature um, crowbar. So um, again, really useful thing to have on a boat in case you need to remove panels or you need to remove something and you don't need the, the joy of a full um, kind of like two foot crowbar, which I also have on board. This is called a torquing or a TP screwdriver and you put the little screws in there, but it means you can get a lot more kind of torque on it. So for stiff, screws um really useful thing to have and invaluable are these things short handled screwdrivers now if you're in a part of the world where you can have where amazon exists you can get these really inexpensively the thing about boats is that normally you have about two inches of working space between where you need to be and where you you know and where the screwdriver needs to be so a lot of the time a long handled or even a regular handled screwdriver will just not fit in the gap you're not going to be able to get your hand in so these little things i think these probably cost five dollars for a set of four really amazing really useful moving around there are some wrenches monkey wrenches and talking wrenches a couple of other bits i've got here now some of you may know my previous job was as a dentist a dental mirror you can get these really inexpensively again they're really useful for looking around trying to find drop bits kind of looking around corners trying to find something that you can't quite see similarly again where did this come from um long nose uh, dental t tweezers just for getting little bits out because i think the thing is about boats it's not all like really big kind of projects that are going to involve you needing hammers and kind of big tools. A lot of the jobs are really fine jobs. Anything to do with electronics, switches going wrong, locker switches, you know, locker catches needing filing down. And I would suggest that probably 50 to 60% of the jobs that I end up doing are kind of like very small. That, and thus you need a toolkit to deal with small things. Which moves us on to files and rasps. Now we have this, which looks like something probably out of a I'm not going to say anything but so kind of like big rasps for like opening up um kind of holes in fiberglass in case you need to smooth edges but these things and um, i would never be on a boat without these these are needle files they are very small different shaped files for doing really kind of fine work for kind of filing down corroded terminals for kind of making small kind of uh, adjustments to to catches and clasps I think that these are probably one of the most invaluable things on this boat, uh, a set of needle files. Uh, this is my second set because they're really fragile and they break. So needle files, I think, are an absolute must. So there you go. That's my top tip. Get some needle files. So socket set. We have a full socket set here. Um, it's got ratchet. It's a ratcheting socket set, which means it will move both ways. Um, metric and imperial for those of us or those of you that watched our video where we couldn't find plumbing supplies set of regular spanners here again metric and imperial 
loads of different sizes, all in a wallet. And these things, ratchet spanners. This is a cheap set of ratchet spanners. I tend to not buy expensive tools. And the reason I don't buy expensive tools is they break. They break and they, they drop overboard. So um, this is, these are really useful just for in close spaces. There's a little um, clip on there so they ratchet both ways. So I have a set of ratchet spanners as well um, as regular spanners and sockets. These things kind of like all kind of form half of the basics of my tool bag. Okay, so as with the magic of television or YouTube, half the tool kit has been put away. This is the tool bag that I use. It basically has a handle, I can just carry it around and it's got everything I need in it. So the second half of this is basically saws. Now I don't think that I've got, I have hundreds of saws, not hundreds, probably tens, all have specific purposes, but here's the ones that I use the most. I've got woodworking saws, like big long saws. This is probably one of my most useful things. It's a metal saw. It's one of two saws I have. The reason I have two saws is that it's such a valuable thing to have on board that I don't ever want to be without a spare metal saw. Reason it's so valuable is number one as a safety as a safety um, uh, a safety precaution. Exactly. Should we ever lose the rig? Um, a metal saw is a good way of cutting the rig away. We have bolt cutters. We also have hydraulic bolt cutters. Um, but in all the tests, it seems to be that um, saws tend to be the most, a metal saw is the best way of cutting your rig away, unless you've got those explo exploding um, bolt cutters. So we have, a, we have two metal saws and a lot of metal saw blades. This little monkey is, it's three saws in one. Um, change the blades as you need to, one is wood, one is metal. Um, it's useful because you can have the handle in different directions. Again, I found a lot of use for this. Wrenches and pliers. Again, this is these little pliers. We have five little pairs of these, all with different shaped beaks. Really useful. Pliers are one of those things on boats you have to have lots of. Um, again, so you may not have thought of. Small wire brushes for cleaning corroded components. And you will find you have a lot of corroded components on boats. Anything where there's electricity and moisture, you will find corrodes. And it's not always things that are, for instance, um, exposed to the elements outside. By example, the light in our fridge gets moisture in it. And so every now and then we have to take a wire brush. So get some wire brushes, really useful. A full set of metric and imperial Allen keys, again, I think these are probably like my top five things to have on a boat if you don't have a full set, and I think there must be 30 in here. Yeah, probably 30 of them, of which, and this is my fault, I've lost one of them. You must replace your Allen keys because the ones that you use the most are the ones you lose the most. So I've lost my 1 8 inch Allen key. Other things you can see here, this is like a little hole cutting set. Um, we use it a lot. I do a lot of maintenance on the boat and we fit a lot of our things. So um, a, just a drill set that enables you to cut holes. Um, most of these tools are between five, well, probably about five years old. I, I collect, I've collect. i collected them because you use them on, I've used them on all the boats that we have. So they are in good condition, but they're filthy because they get used. So I'm not gonna sit there and polish my tool all day long. Oh yes. <laughs> anyway, drills. We have this. Um, it's a standard 12 volt electric drill. This has been going for years. At some point I expect it to die, but um, here's the thing, amazing thing to have on board. Top tip here, get yourself, and it's buried somewhere, I can't find it, a hand drill. One of those old school things, they're about 10 to $15. It could save your boat. Here's the thing, if you ever need to drill under the water line, because say for instance you hold your boat, you cannot use an electric drill. So one of those little hand drills that you can drill a hole with and then put a screw into, there are cases of boats being saved. There was a boat somewhere that hit a reef, got hold, and it was only the hand drill that allowed um, a group of sailors to kind of literally screw uh, plywood bandage over the hole using a hand drill. So never go offshore without a hand drill. I know that sounds, I'm probably gonna get comments on YouTube. There was someone yesterday that's like, why do you need a life raft? Just, you know, just strap yourself into the dinghy and be done with. I'm like, if that's honestly what you think, Good luck finding crew. Anyway. <laughs> it's 
so I digress. And there's a, there's one other tool that I found in my box only because and the only reason I put it here is because it, it's such a massive tool. And we all like a massive tool, don't we? We certainly do. This. This is a beast of a tool. Now, my friend Richard made this for me. My friend Richard is uh, works. Um, I don't know what he does actually, <laughs> but he's a mechanic. That's what he's, he's a he's a mechanic. He's a very good and competent mechanic. Now, the reason we have this massive tool is as follows: we have a calorifier to heat our water, and there is a massive, massive nut on the top of it. And every couple of years, the heating element just corrodes and you need to change the heating element and this is the only tool that can get the nut off on the top of the calorifier to change the heating element so we have this this kind of falls well into the realm of specialist tools so that's why we have this lying around these are some of the spares that we keep and I don't I wouldn't consider it spares because they're not specific spare parts for the boat I'm gonna run through not exclusively everything but these are some of the things that we have um, we keep this first it's just a big container full of it's called a bosun's box and it's compartmentalized and it's got loads of kind of things in it like there's a, a compartment for stainless steel screws 318 screws or 316 screws so it's got loads of little bits that i can i it's one of these things with a boat only i know where all this stuff is so if someone says where's this i'd know what where to look for it i kind of have my own system and i think most people do have their own system so this is just one of the boxes i have this i think really it's screws and general chandry items if i kind of can't find it i'd have to go to west marine so that's kind of screws and bits and bobs we also keep on board um a stack we've got eight of these um this is just the plumbing one and huh, we watched our previous episode about our lack of plumbing supplies so this has got um, loads of different bits in it that we keep lying around so plumbing bits there is a service kit for the Jabsco there is a spare inline strainer for the water pump there is PTFE tape in there so it's kind of my go-to box um, for plumbing things and this is why the boat gets trashed so often so because you know invariably the, if I want the plumbing box it's going to be under seven others we similarly have another box for um, tape tape and line so um, spinnaker repair tape um, metal bait covered tape for repairing um, something which could be hot uh, this is three millimeter line in case I need to attach a little line to something as a, as a pull cable ties and gaffer tape which hold most boats together wouldn't be without them insulating tape which if it's not cable ties and gaffer tape it's insulating tape again I've got like 10 rolls of this in different colors and something else that I want you to talk about is this this is a spirit level um, most people will know what a spirit level is and if you are ever installing anything in a boat a spirit level used to be the most useful thing that you could have on a boat it has been superseded by this, which is my phone. Because they all have inclinometers in them, you can, bu you can get for free on just about any app store a digital spirit level, which will give you an angle um, down to the degree. And it is brilliant because it doesn't matter if the boat is listing very slightly. For instance, our boat lists, I think, one degree to port sometimes if one of the lockers is really full because you can take a reading from something which is static like for instance I can put this on the compression post and see what the lean of the boat is and then do the calculations for what angle I need so when we installed our hydrovane just to get the angles on the back of the boat you know literally put it there it's like okay that's like a eight degree lean or that was an eight degree lean and so I could then go and type or dial the uh, that that angle into the the bandsaw to cut our backing plates so I think it's it, it, it has been an absolute godsend having a digital spirit level on your phone so that's a real kind of boon I would suggest getting yourself one for anything like that kind of superseded this which you know this bubble thing is brilliant if you're trying to put up a shelf but if you're trying to get something with a tolerance of like less than one to two degrees, use a digital spirit level and it will cost you nothing. Most people have smartphones nowadays. So that is where we are with this. So 
six boxes of bits just for general i need this and this as i keep saying it's not it doesn't deal with our electronics locker our electronics locker is something else i need to for the sake of my own sanity for the sake of the tidiness of this boat put all this stuff away and bring the next set of tools out so that you know what we've got in place so that deals with this locker all right everyone i hope that you found that kind of interesting and at the very least informative that was part one and nick will be back next week just in a few days time with part two of what is in his toolbox and the type of spares that we keep on board so stay tuned for that if you think that that's going to be something that you're interested in um, as always leave a comment down below if this kind of episode is what you'd like then let us know and we'll keep on producing them if you find this just really dry and boring then let us know that as well try and put it nicely and um and we'll try and change tack a little bit but you guys have asked for this so you know you you want to know what's in nick's toolbox <laughs> anyway as always if you can give us a thumbs up that's a huge help and if you haven't subscribed to our channel already we would really appreciate it if you did um yeah we'll see you in a few days time with another informative episode so see ya